a meticulously planned defensive operation by Ukraine's 10th Mountain Assault Brigade demonstrated how modern military technology and tactical patience can neutralize even large-scale armored assaults while preserving defender lives. The Ukrainian Edelweiss Brigade demonstrated exceptional tactical precision in a brilliantly structured defensive operation that effectively counters even large-scale Russian mechanized assaults. Their coordinated defense not only crushed the attacking force but established a new standard for modern defensive fortification design and implementation. The Russians aimed to capture Siversk, a crucial Ukrainian logistics hub that serves as a strategic barrier protecting Lyman and Sloviansk. The city's natural defenses include the Serebryansky Forest to the northeast, which has proven vital in repelling Russian assaults. Several hill ridges to the southeast provide additional protection, with one near Ivano Derivka serving as a key Ukrainian stronghold. While the village sits in a lowland, the surrounding elevated terrain, combined with a small river and large water reservoir, creates a formidable defensive barrier. This section of the front line is defended by the battle-tested Ukrainian 10th Mountain Assault Brigade Edelweiss. The Russians executed a multi-stage attack to increase their breakthrough chances. They began with precision Iskander ballistic missile strikes on suspected Ukrainian positions near Sloviansk. Following this, they intensified their bombardment of the hill ridge above Ivano Darivka, employing thermobaric artillery systems for maximum impact. After completing the artillery preparation, Russian forces launched a large-scale assault with 22 armored vehicles, 7 tanks, 13 BMPs, and 2 MTLBs, supported by approximately 120 soldiers. Controlling the opposing hill ridge and using Berestov village as a staging ground, they planned to advance rapidly from Berestov toward Ivano Darivka, aiming to seize the strategic hilltop stronghold from the southeast. They avoided the fields due to extensive mining. Despite hours of intense shelling, Ukrainian defenders were well prepared. They detected the Russian column early, but strategically delayed engagement until the column drove perpendicular to their stronghold, exposing the entire assault group. Once all Russian forces were in direct view, Ukrainians disabled the leading vehicle with kamikaze drones. As Russian soldiers evacuated the disabled infantry fighting vehicle, Ukrainian forces deployed additional drones to drop grenades, effectively neutralizing them. While other Russian vehicles attempted to advance closer to the Ukrainian stronghold, Ukrainian anti-tank guided missile operators, strategically positioned on high ground, employed domestically produced Stugna P systems against the advancing armor. Geolocated images show multiple Ukrainian ATGM crews engaging Russian vehicles from the left flank, destroying them systematically while surviving Russian troops fled in panic. After halting the Russian column approximately one kilometer from Ivano Derivka, Ukrainian forces continued targeting remaining vehicles with FPV drones, preventing any Russians from reaching the village or establishing a foothold. According to geolocated footage from the 10th Ukrainian Brigade, they suffered no casualties while destroying six of seven Russian tanks, nine of 13 BMPs, and killing or wounding half of the assault force. The Ukrainian fighters have created an exemplary defense structure in this region, exploiting high ground advantages and forcing Russian assault units to expose their flanks during attacks. Their confidence in their defensive configuration and tactical patience enabled maximum damage, destroying 75% of the enemy's armor and eliminating 50% of their manpower within minutes. This operation sets a new standard for defensive operations and serves as a model for other Ukrainian brigades.
Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky poured cold water Thursday on a plan by U.S. President-elect Donald Trump to strike a rapid peace deal between Kiev and Moscow, arguing it would amount to a loss for Ukraine. I believe that President Trump really wants a quick decision to end Russia's war against Ukraine, Zelensky told journalists in Budapest. He wants that. It doesn't mean that it will happen this way. Trump, who was re-elected U.S. president this week, said in 2023 that he would seek a quick deal to end the war, asserting, I'll have that done in 24 hours after meeting Russian President Vladimir Putin and Zelensky. He repeated the claim several times on the campaign trail. Speaking to journalists in Budapest where he was attending a gathering of European leaders, Zelensky said that while Ukraine sought a fair end to the war, rushing into a ceasefire or a peace deal with Moscow would lead to a bad outcome for Kiev. Russian President Putin said Ukraine would have to stay out of NATO for there to be peace, while Ukrainian President Zelensky said he wouldn't agree to a ceasefire unless it included security guarantees. The Ukrainian military has been losing territory at an accelerated pace, particularly over the past three months. Each month, Russia has been taking more territory relative to the last month. According to the general staff, Russia has lost 704,300 personnel since the beginning of the full-scale war. Over the past day, Ukrainian defense forces eliminated an additional 1,400 Russian soldiers, along with 10 tanks, 20 armored vehicles, 24 artillery systems, and other enemy equipment.